Hi, everybody. Welcome to English Digest. I'm Tom. Hi, I'm Stephanie. Today is our travel unit, and in today's lesson, we're going to Jinmen, which, of course, is an off island here. It's a Waidao, as you call it in Chinese, an offshore island, I guess you could say, off、uh, the shore of Taiwan. Even though technically speaking, it's closer to China or mainland China than it is to Taiwan proper, but、uh, still, Jinmen is open. To tourism here from Taiwan, and I'm sure mainlanders can go there as well. So it's a popular tourist destination, and that's the subject of today's program. Yeah, I've never been there before, so this is kind of fun to learn a little bit more about Jinmen. And I'm going to get there someday. I'm going to get there. We're also going to talk about the history of Jinmen Island and who got there first and、uh, who it belonged to. You know, back in history, countries would change ownership of different parts of the World, so we're going to talk about that too.、Uh, I know you've been there for an hour, Tom. <laughs>、uh, yeah, I actually went to the airport there for some <laughs> kind of job, and we didn't leave the airport, and I had to leave like. Two hours later,、so. I think we could both safely say we're not experts on Jinmen, but our author did a lot of research and found out some interesting things. So let's get started. We're going to read first. If you're looking for an off the beaten track destination for your next long weekend, look no further than Jinmen. Rich in history and beautiful coastlines. This tiny island county is located closer to China than Taiwan. In fact, it is this proximity to China that makes Jinmen so historically significant. In the 17th century, Jinmen was used as a base by Koxinga, a Ming Dynasty loyalist, to free Taiwan from the Dutch. In the centuries between Koxinga's time in Jinmen and the Cold War, the island was a fairly peaceful place. That changed when Jiang Kai-shek and his nationalist army fled China for Taiwan in 1949, using Jinmen as one of their first lines of defense. During the conflict, Jinmen's residents lived through 20 years of shelling from mainland China and 43 years of Taiwanese martial law. Jinmen has been open to tourism since 1993 and is home to plenty of impressive sites. Including Ju Guang Tower, a memorial built to honor Jinmen's fallen soldiers. Visitors can also head to Guning War History Museum to learn more about the island's role in the Cold War. Finally, check out Shan Ho Folk Culture Village, 18 Southern Fujian-style buildings constructed toward the end of the Qing Dynasty. Visitors interested in taking home a historical souvenir are in luck. Blacksmiths have made good use of the bombs dropped on Jinmen by forging knives out of their steel. The prized knives are considered to be among the best in the world. For those who prefer tasty snacks, Jinmen is famous for its gong candy made from peanuts. Looking for something that packs more punch? Pick up a bottle of Gaoliang liquor. All these reasons and more should earn Jinmen a top spot on your travel wish list. We're going to explore fascinating, fantastic Jinmen, which I've never been to, but it sounds like a great place to go when it's a little cooler. <laughs> Maybe it's a little cooler because it is an island. It might be a tad cooler than. Maybe the center of Taipei City, which is full of concrete and you know metal. Well, it so, could be during、maybe. the winter, of course.、Uh, Jinmen and Mazu、cold. always have colder temperatures than Taiwan, so maybe it's cooler in the maybe, summer. Yeah. Who knows? So if you're looking for an off the beaten track destination. Maybe for your next long weekend, look no further than Jinmen. So a destination is the location that you're traveling to. You know where is your travel destination? Where would you like to go? Your destination. So a lot of us are looking forward to our holidays, of course, our vacations. So usually you have to sit down and pick out a destination that you're interested in, and then make plans around that. 
the good thing about Jimin is pretty close, right?、Mm. And you don't have to spend a lot of money. Say you don't have to spend even as much money as you have to to go to Japan, folks. You、right. can go to your own Jimin that is so close.、Uh, exactly, and maybe you've already been to Kyoto, to Tokyo. Everybody else has. It's so boring. Boy, I've been there too. I've been there twenty times. But、uh, hey, maybe you could tell your friends that you went to Jinmen because it's off the beaten track. It's a destination that lots of people haven't really been to before. A travel destination. Where are you going when you travel? So this might be a place you could consider for your next holiday.、Uh, rich in history and beautiful coastlines, this tiny island county is located closer to China than Taiwan. So it's got beautiful coastlines, which basically. Refers to the scenery where the coast is, where the land meets the sea. You know, you've got lots of waves and rocks and stuff like that. Maybe some pretty houses and stuff like that. Of course,、uh, this refers to different areas of the coastline. So beautiful coastlines, different scenery along the coast, like you can have down on the east coast in Taiwan and Ilan and、uh, Hualien, Taichung, etc. Right, I can't believe it's closer to China. I, I didn't realize that. So, in fact, it is this proximity to China that makes Jinmen so historically significant. Proximity is a word we use when we're talking about how near something is in space and time or relationship. So here、uh, we're saying that、uh, this proximity, this closeness, this nearness to China, that's what makes Jinmen so significant in terms of history. Now, moving on to the next paragraph, we've got in the 17th century. That's back in the 1600s. Jinmen was used as a base by a man named. Koshinga, <laughs> it's uh, the Haka uh, transliteration of his name. You guys know him by、uh, Zheng Changgong.、Uh, his name though was Guo Xingye. Uh, Koshinga, Koshinga. It's kind of a, it's weird in English too. So、hmm. he was a Ming Dynasty loyalist. If you're a loyalist, guys, you are very loyal to whatever comes before that word. So he was loyal to the Ming Dynasty, and he used Jimin as a base. A base here just means a place where he's going to set up camp. He's going to be there. That's his base. He may fly or go and travel to other destinations, but his base—that's where he lives the majority of the time. He was a Ming Dynasty loyalist. He wanted to free Taiwan from the Dutch. At this point in history, guys, as you know, because you've all studied in school, this island was considered to be Dutch territory. That's right, and that's a good thing. Of course, we didn't want the Dutch here in Taiwan because, as you know, in Amsterdam you can smoke marijuana as much as you want, and、uh, we don't want to have that in Taiwan here. So it's a good thing that the Dutch were kicked out, wearing their wooden shoes. They went back to their tulips and their windmills. Good riddance. We、Goodbye. don't want. Yeah, we don't want you guys here. Go back to Europe. <laughs> Get out of here. Thanks to Kusinga here, he kicked the Dutch. Out and in the centuries between Kusinga's time in Jinmen and the Cold War, the island was a fairly peaceful place. So yes,、uh, when he was in Jinmen between that time and then when the Cold War started, Jinmen was、uh, a pretty peaceful place. It was a fairly peaceful place. Fairly just means mostly, not one hundred percent, but maybe ninety percent. It was a peaceful place, a great place to hang out and enjoy your golden years. Mm -hmm. Fairly, yeah, it's pretty. You could also substitute the word "pretty" there. It was pretty. It was pretty peaceful.、Uh, that changed when Chiang Kai-shek and his nationalist army fled China for Taiwan in 1949. Also, a big. Piece of history there. If you flee, that is the present tense form of this verb "fled" to flee. You leave quickly. Usually, you're running away from some danger.、Uh, maybe there's been a volcano that erupts. You know, we just had a couple of volcanoes erupt in、uh, Guatemala and Hawaii. You might have to flee quickly to avoid the lava. That black. Hot ash that's coming out. So the nationalist, he、uh, of course was fighting Mao Zedong in China. He took his nationalist army. They left China and they came to Taiwan in 1949.
Uh, exactly. That's of course part of history, yeah. as you know. This is、uh, Jiang Kai Shek. Sometimes we call him Shang Kai Shek,、uh, or Jiang Zhong Jiang, as he sometimes is referred to. But of course, this is a very controversial person here in Taiwan,、uh, depending on which political party you belong to. So we're not going to talk about him too much. But they came over to Taiwan after the Civil War there in 1949, and they not only went to Taiwan, but they They also were in Jinmen and Mazu, and maybe some other islands. I'm not quite sure, but in any case, here it was used as their first line of defense、mm. against China, because the communists, of course, there、uh, still wanted Taiwan. Of course, they still do. They consider Taiwan a part of China. It's just kind of a little technical problem right now that will eventually solve itself. When Taiwan returns to the motherland's arms,、uh, that's of course what the、uh, China communists would like to have. But in any case, again, that's political, here, political here. But again,、uh, it was one of their first lines of defense. I guess they were attacked quite a bit. I've heard uh, stories of uh, uh, them getting shelled during this time. Lots of bombs were flying over from the mainland there, and I think somebody also told me that、uh, scuba divers used to swim over to Jinmen. And they tried to kill the soldiers on Jinmen、uh, using knives and stuff like that. So it was probably not a very wonderful time to be in that place. Yeah. So during the conflict, that is the struggle between、uh, the communists and the、uh, nationalist army. Jinmen's residents lived through twenty years of shelling, as Tom was talking about. Shelling is those bombs that are coming over from mainland China, and forty-three years of Taiwanese martial law. That's a long time. So you can have a conflict with people in your family, right? If you're arguing, you're disagreeing with someone, you can have a conflict. This is, of course, a much bigger deal than having a fight with a brother or a sister. These are two groups of men, two big armies that are having a conflict. So they're fighting. Now, if you're a resident, we all know that that means you live there. It doesn't mean that you were born there. It doesn't mean that you are that. Countries or citizens, or that country citizen. It just means you live there now. So I'm not a Taiwanese citizen, but I can say I'm a resident of Taiwan. So if you live there, you're a resident. Now, martial law、uh, happened.、Uh, I think it extended through the eighties, right? Nineteen eighty-seven、yeah. is when they lifted martial law, which means basically the military control society, right? And、uh, that was going on in Jinmen. Even though a、uh, martial law was lifted in Taiwan in nineteen eighty-seven, I think it still went on in Jinmen for a little while longer because it's、uh, so close to China. Yeah. But、uh, I guess it was lifted or something, and tourism is open there, so now you can go there. And have the holiday of your life, and we'll continue talking about Jinmen in just a couple of seconds. Let's take a break right now and listen to our Chinese teacher. Hello, everyone. My name is Tina. 我们今天要介绍的旅游景点呢是金门这个地方。首先来看到第一个空格的句子提到 ，In fact, blank one is this proximity to China that makes Kimen so historically significant. 这里的句型是一个强调的分裂句型 ，it is 再加上 that 来连接其他的句子内容，有强调的作用。Proximity 指的就是临近、接近的意思。正因为呢，金门非常的接近中国，而使得它在历史上是如此意义重大。这是一个文法句型的强调用法，所以第一题的标准答案我们就选择 C 选项。It. 而第二个空格在这里的句子提到 ，That changed when Chiang Kai-shek and his nationalist army fled China for Taiwan in 1949, using King Men as one of their first lines of blank two. 在这里提到历史的这个背景，西元一九四九年，蒋中正跟国军呢 fled China for Taiwan， 逃离中国来到台湾，他就把金门当作是呢他怎样的最前线之一。第二题的 A 选项 bravery 勇气 ，B defense 防卫 ，C context 上下文文本。
D anxiety 焦虑。当时金门呢，就是防卫的最前线之一。搭配文艺，第二题我们就选择 B defense。第三个空格的句子写着 ：During the conflict, Kimen's residents lived blank three twenty years of shelling from mainland China and third forty three years of Taiwanese martial law. 正因为金门的战略位置呢，而使得金门的情况因而改变。在冲突的期间呢，金门的居民怎么样？二十年来自于中国大陆的炮火，以及在台湾呢，也实行了戒严法四十三年。在这里，我们要选择一个介系词来搭配 live， 他们经历了这些痛苦以及这些的事件。那么，在第三题搭配文艺，我们就可以选择 A 选项 through to live through， 我们就可以解释成为经历的意思。We're going to take a quick break. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. Welcome back, guys. We're talking about Jimen in、uh, one of the islands off Taiwan. We found out is actually closer to China than to Taiwan, but、uh, it belongs to Taiwan. It's our travel unit, so we're looking at a place to go、uh, if you have a vacation coming up, a holiday. And we're describing Jimen as off the beaten track. If you're off the beaten track, you're some place that not many people have gone to, because if the track is beaten, just means a lot of Feet have walked over that path, and you can, you know, see that a lot of people have gone over that path or that track. So off the beaten track. Sometimes I'll find stores that are really cool, but they're off the beaten track. Not many people know about it, so I'll tell my best friends. Ooh, check this store out. So it doesn't have to be a place; it can be a store as well. Uh, yes, some place unusual that you haven't been to before. A and, restaurant, yeah.、Uh, sure. So, of course,、uh, Jinmen is such a place.、Uh, it's a place that people don't usually get to. If tourists come to Taiwan, of course, they tend to what stay in Taipei here. They may go to Taichung, Taroko Gorge, Kanding, or whatever. But they probably don't have time to go to Jinmen, and even people in Taiwan probably haven't really had time to take a vacation in Jinmen. So Jinmen has been open to tourism since 1993. Tourism, of course, is all about people going on trips and having fun and staying hotels, staying in hotels and going to resorts and things like that, going shopping and having fun, and going to beaches, going swimming and stuff like that. That's tourism and. And、it's been open to tourism since the year 1993, which is、uh, you know about、uh, 20 years or so. Yeah. And it's home to plenty of impressive sites. Okay, there are lots of things to see and do there. And some of these sites, these places you can go to, include Ju Guang Tower, which is a memorial which was built to honor Jinmen's fallen soldiers. So we've got a memorial that's a structure or a monument or something that is there so that we remember the. Sacrifices people made in the past, like in Washington D.C., there's the Lincoln Memorial. It's a hall there with a big statue of Abraham Lincoln. It's so that we remember him. Well, and there's the Sun Yat-sen Memorial Hall right here、sure. in Taiwan. That's quite impressive. It kind of reminds me of the Lincoln Memorial, the way that he's sitting in the chair there. So、um, it's a way to remember people who have done great things for your country or maybe your city. Some cities have memorial memorial statues for people who contributed to that particular city. So it's a way to honor. Jinmen's fallen soldiers. If you honor someone, you pay them respect. You esteem them. You consider them to be somebody that's worth your honor, worth talking about and remembering forever. Visitors can also head to or go to Gunin War History Museum to learn more about the island's role in the Cold War. So, if you want to learn more about history, this is a great place to go. I actually love historical museums that focus on history. I think those are very fun. So, if you're into that and you want to learn more about what kind of part Jinmen played in the Cold War, this is a place for you. 
That's right. The Cold War, of course,、uh, the war between the East and the West, basically during the、uh, what the fifties, the sixties, or something, mainly between the U.S. and Russia. They weren't really fighting, but they were still、uh, at odds with each other. So it's a Cold War, not a hot war. They weren't fighting, but finally, you can check out Shan Ho Folk Culture Village. Cool. It's eighteen Southern Fujian style buildings. That were constructed toward the end of the Qing Dynasty. I think I've seen pictures of that.、It、I'm looks, glad they、uh, preserved these. You know, some of the old buildings have been torn down. This is great. Yep,、yeah, absolutely. Looks pretty cool there. And、uh, yes, they're、uh, buildings that、uh, were built in Southern Fujian style. There、huh. are actually quite a few buildings in Taiwan built in that style. Although they keep getting torn down, so they can build luxury apartments. But I guess they've、uh, preserved this in Jinmen. It's quite、mm. valuable. Valuable in terms of、cool. tourism. Now, here in the last paragraph,、uh, let's talk about some souvenirs. Here, of course,、yeah. if you travel to some place, you want to bring something back to help you remember your trip. So, yes, visitors interested in taking home a historical souvenir. Are in luck. So a souvenir, of course, can be anything. It can be a doll or something. But in this particular case, it's a historical souvenir, something that kind of represents the history of the place. Historical means having to do with history. If there's a museum that is about history, don't call it an historical museum. Historical means the building itself is old and means something in terms of history. But the museum. Should be called a history museum, and historical means it has to do with history. So yes, indeed, it could be something that represents the past of Jinmen. And we've got some of these historical souvenirs to talk about here. Blacksmiths; these are men or women, typically in the olden days. They were guys. They are guys that work with metal, and they shape that metal using really hot fire or a furnace, and they hammer it. Blacksmiths make things like.、Uh, Hooves for horses to protect their little their hoof, and、uh, they made good use of the bombs dropped on Jinmen by forging knives out of their steel. So, of course, bombs are made out of steel, and when they explode, that that metal comes down to the ground, and then they picked up the metal, and the blacksmiths actually used it by shaping them, shaping these pieces of broken off metal into knives.、It、says here they forged knives out of their steel. Steel to forge guys means to make or shape a metal object by heating it really to a high degree in a fire or furnace, and then you have to hammer it. You've probably seen it if you've watched movies or TV shows of historical periods. Yeah, somebody told me though those knives probably ran out of that metal long ago, and that the knives they sell now are not made from the steel from those bombs. Oh, but,、uh, they're not. They're fake. They're not real.、Uh, maybe, but uh, 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 that's what somebody told me.、Uh. So don't quote me on that. But in any case, these knives are still prized, which means people value them. They're considered a prize if you have them. So these prized knives are considered to be among the best. In the world, you can do some great cutting if you have those knives. And for those who don't want to bring back knives, and you prefer something to eat, maybe you can prefer a tasty snack,、mm. uh, something sweet, maybe cake or something, some kind of things to snack on. So these are tasty snacks, and Jinmen is famous for its gong candy. Which is made from peanuts, and yes, I've had some friends come back from Jinmen, and they seem to always bring back this candy. It's a very sweet kind of peanut candy. Yeah, it's pretty tasty, actually. I don't think it's too sweet.、Uh, you know, Americans we love really sweet stuff, and you guys don't, so it's not that sweet, but、uh, it is tasty. That would be something I would bring back with me instead of a knife <laughs> forged out of steel. I would tend to pick up some snacks for friends. So that's one thing you can go for. They're famous for their gong candy. You can、uh, also, if you are looking for something more adult-like, you might look for some liquor, something that packs more punch. If something packs a punch or packs more punch, it really kind of you know hits you. Oh, packs a punch. It has a lot of flavor or Or、it's very strong. We'll often say that. Ooh, that packs a punch. Ooh, ooh. pick up a bottle of、uh, Gaoliang liquor, which is very famous too. Liquor, of course, is alcohol. 
So that is not for children; that would be for adults. And all these reasons and more should earn Jinmen a top spot on your travel wish list. So this could be one place to put on your list of must see, must go places before you kick the bucket, right? The, yes, you can put it on your bucket list. You ought to check it out. And、uh, gee, I ought to go there again sometime and try to get out of the airport. That's、uh, all、yeah. I saw <laughs> when I went to Jinmen. But、uh, that brings us to the end of our lesson for today. We still need to hear from our Chinese teacher. 接着第四个空格的句子写着 ，Kimen has been open to tourism since 1993 and is home to plenty of blank four sites. 这里谈到呢，金门呢，从一九九三年开始开放观光。那么在这里呢，有许多怎么样的景点呢？第四题的 A 选项 ，impressive， 令人印象深刻的 ；B，expressive。表情丰富的 ，C protective 保护的 ，D effective 有效的。这里后面的景点谈到了，像是举光楼等等等，他们都是令人印象深刻的景点。所以搭配文艺第四题，我们就选择 A 选项 impressive。而第五个空格在这里呢，就是告诉大家一定要来看一下这个山后民俗文化村。补充说明，他们是 eighteen。Southern Fujian style buildings, blank five, toward the end of the Qing Dynasty. 其实呢，这个山后民俗文化村呢，就是十八座在清朝末期怎么样的闽南风格建筑。我们来看一下，在第五个空格 ，A downloaded 下载 ，B destroyed 破坏 ，C surrounded 环绕。D constructed 建造建筑，这所谓的民俗村就是十八座在清朝末期所建造的建筑物，所以搭配文艺，第五题可以选择 D constructed。第六个空格的句子写着 ：Visitors interested in taking home a historical blank six are in luck. 如果呢你有兴趣带回家一个历史的什么的游客，那你们就很幸运了。那么通常来到金门，你都要带一个具有历史性的什么呢？第六题的 A 选项 ：contract 契约 ；B souvenir 纪念品 ；C concept 观念。D attraction 吸引人的事物，想带回家的当然是具有历史意义的纪念品，所以搭配文艺。第六题可以选择 B souvenir。第七个空格 Four blank seven prefer tasty snacks. Kingman is famous for its gong candy made from peanuts. 那么，对于那些喜欢呢好吃的点心，金门的贡糖就非常有名喽。我们来看看第七题 ，A anyone who， 那么应该要搭配单数的动词 ，B they who，C whoever。D those who 在英文里面，我们说 those who 可以搭配一个形容词子句来代表那些怎么样的人。对于那些喜欢吃可口点心的人而言，所以我们会说 for those who prefer tasty snacks。所以搭配文法句意，第七题的标准答案就选择 D those who。OK， 以上就是今天的课文讲解，谢谢收听。Thanks for joining us, guys. We hope you'll join us again for another edition of English Digest. For English Digest, I'm Stephanie, and I'm Tom. Goodbye.、Bye.